glad I went to FDOS to talks because this is kind of a mixture between the two of them. It's open source software and I'm going to pretend to know stuff about stuff. So, um, a little disclaimer as well I am neither an open source software developer or an artist, and that will be very quickly proven when I give you a demo of Blender. Um, but I am a hobbyist, and I guess that's kind of why I'm here talking to you because tech and art, they kind of merge together, and you know, Blender can be a bit daunting as very expertly pointed out, I think, I, for five years I opened Blender daily and cried and just closed it again. <laughs> um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about Blender and the title, I had loads of really funny titles but I thought I'd be a grown up. <laughs> Didn't seem worth it. We'll see. Um, so what is Blender? Um, in 1989 there was a studio in the Netherlands called Neo Geo. They're an animation studio. And uh, they decided that they wanted to move into the 3D animation space. So this kind of small company spun off called Not a Number Technologies, and um, they they were originally working on Amigas, which are uh, calculators, I guess, by today's standards, <laughs> probably worse. Um, but they started uh, writing some 3D software. Um, around about 1993, Blender actually first appeared, um, and. Uh, it was shareware technology and, and the company were, you know, they were making some money out of it, but not enough. And uh, they they got investors and they, they, they grew really large and then all of a sudden it didn't really work out and nobody wanted the software anymore. Uh, so um, the company was folding. So the guys got together and they said, hey, can we open source that? And the company said, eh, no, not really. Uh, well, how about you give us 100,000 euro? and uh, then we'll open source it. So the guys kind of went to the community and the community said, yeah, sure, we'd love it for free. Here's money. And in seven weeks, they made 100,000 euro and now it's open source. So it's licensed under the GPL v3, so you can fork it and you can play with it and stuff like that, but as long as you open source it, that's all cool. Um, I don't think anybody bothers because Blender is enormously complicated. There's loads of code in there. It's really scary. Um, currently there's only two full-time developers working on Blender that are paid and there's two part-time developers working on it who kind of get sponsorship from other companies like Steam, um, Valve, uh, Unity, Pay, Google and all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's where Blender started the open source world. Um, this guy, um, <laughs> Tom Rosendahl, was the original developer. and uh, He's now the BDFL of the Blender Foundation, which is the benevolent dictator for life. Basically, it was his idea, and he ran around looking for 100,000 and open sourced the project. So he was one of the original developers, and he decided, this is my creative direction. I'm going to you know, lead this project and make sure that it stays on course. So he runs the Blender Foundation, and I know what you're thinking. He is single. <laughs> it's important. I don't know why that's on his biography, but there <laughs> um, So he's, he's in... He's in um, He's in the Netherlands, and, um, Amsterdam. Sorry, he's in Amsterdam, and uh, he runs the he runs the Blender Foundation. He also runs um, another group called the Blender Institute, and the Blender Institute are a company that pay for the Blender Foundation to be there, and they put money into artists and they put money into the community by. Uh, doing lots of cool projects. So these are three movies that, that they've done. They're shorts now, they're about 50 minutes long. This one is their first one here, which is called Elephant's Dream. The, uh, conceptually, it's really complex. Graphically, it's really dated, but it's fantastic for uh, what it came out of. Sintel, it's a lovely story about a girl and her pet dragon. Nearly made me cry today when I was watching it again. And this one's about a rabbit fighting squirrels. It's pretty awesome. I, I think it just speaks for itself, really. Um, <laughs> Blender Institute, uh, they paid uh, artists to make those movies, to show how the open source software can compete in, in the world today. Because a lot of people kind of go, open source software, mm, if I pay somebody loads of money, I'll get something better, and it'll be able to do brilliant things. But that's not what art's about. You don't pay lots of money to become a good artist. You be creative. And if you're given tools for free, then you've got one less barrier to being your creative self. Blender wanted to show people that, and instead of going to a lot of software developers and scientists and saying, hey, make Blender awesome, they went to a lot of artists and said, what can we do to not get in your way? And lo and behold, fantastic stuff happened. So because they keep a close tie with the community, they run um, a yearly conference in Amsterdam. 
and they hold a Susanna board. This monkey statue here, this monkey is Susanna. Susanna is very pretty. Um, anybody ever hear of the what teapot thingy, the Utah teapot? In, if you do anything in 3D graphics, the Utah teapot is a model of a teapot in 3D which is used to test 3D software to make sure that you can draw a teapot. The Blender guys, they, they, they do not know teapots, no, They're, so they made a monkey face. So that's their test for 3D. Um, so every year they hold the Suzanne Awards and they give away uh, trophies to people who do the best videos of Blender or the best software contributions to Blender. It's really cool. Um, the conference uh, I think this year is slated for 250 attendees. It sold out last year, and it's over three days, and it looks like an absolute riot. It's presentations by artists and artist studios, talks about how to get involved with the open source software developers, workshops, and uh, of course they sell loads of t-shirts and loads of training DVDs so that they can pay for Blender and the software foundation and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's really cool. Um, so what does Blender do? Well, Blender is... Blender aims to be a studio for you to do all the 3D stuff you want to do. So you, you throw it on your laptop, you throw it on your desktop, you throw it on your 1000 server farm if you want to, because the thing scales like you wouldn't believe. Um, it's, it's a really fast interface for modeling stuff. You know, you, you throw stuff together really, really quickly, and scary as it is, once you get past a few shortcuts, you actually are very free to model and you can do some really cool stuff. I'm going to do t some live demos. So. You know, I'm gonna prove myself really wrong with this. <laughs> uh, it does spot a realistic render. Believe it or not, these are not real fruit. Um, it does uh, rigging and animation. This guy here, he's rigged and animated. Um, it's a picture though, so it's not that animated. Sculpting. The sculpting thing is amazing. Um, I really wish I could sculpt. This is a dragon that was sculpted in Blender. Um, you literally have a lump of stuff. And you get your mouse and you go, uh, 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 and it changes shape. It's cool. <laughs> uh, compositing, you can have a video and um, say you got a video of my hand there and you just pretend there's a cube on it and then when I turn my hand, the cube turns with it. Really cool. Awesome. Uh, physics simulations. Um, anybody ever played Bridge Builder on Steam? It's roughly that level of physics simulations. It's awful. But it's a physics simulation that you're not going to do yourself. So, you know, it's better and it's free. Um, so yeah, that's cool. So, as I said, what can Blender do for you? Let's give this a try. We're going to quickly model something. We're going to texture it. So we're going to stick an image on it. We're going to paint it because you know why not? Like, and uh, then we can export the scene for as an image. So I will quickly try and do that using my laptop that won't crash. <laughs> ah okay. So here's a cube, right? You see that? Cool. And. Um, you can do cool stuff with the cube, so I'll select the face. You can just like extend it like that, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, these are badgers. Badgers are awesome. Uh, <laughs> so what you, about the mushrooms and the snakes? Uh, yeah, they're on the other side of the cube. You can't see it's just, it's behind it. Perspective. <laughs> Trust me, I'm an artist. <clears throat> uh, so if I render this, uh, you get a cube with uh, badgers on it. That's pretty cool, right? That took me seconds to do. I actually just opened it up and there was a cube there, and then I opened a picture and I said, put the picture on a cube. Voila! Uh, so you can you can really rapidly build scenes. So if I just, uh, let's see, we stick a, a Cossack Hedron. Yeah, awesome. Where is that? There's my Cossack Hedron there. Anybody know what my Cossack Hedron is? Um, we can. Put a new material on it, put a new image. Let's see, let's select the badgers. Where's the badgers? Badgers. Oh, uh, yeah, the camera's not looking at it. See, these demos are great. <laughs> uh, let me just move the cube out of the way there and then slip. There you go. That should be in front of the camera. Oh, look, it's like Hasa he drawn with a badger on it. Fantastic. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's that's really cool. Um, you can paint it, so this is, this is really nice uh, when it works. Yeah. Oh, man. 
wish I'd rehearsed this. <laughs> Sorry. So once once you've got like once you've got a texture assigned to an object, maybe we'll look at the queue because that totally worked this morning. Um, you should be able to just go into texture bay mode. There we go. Okay. And you can just paint on the cube like that straight away. And why is this kind of cool? And why am I showing it to you? And why does it look kind of dull? You don't really care. Um, if you had like a, a head in there and you wanted to do the makeup on it, you know, like you could go and get a picture and get a flat picture and you could draw on the flat picture and you could hope to get all the shadow and shading and all the eyelashes right. Or you could load it up in 3D and you could paint it in 3D. And painting stuff in 3D kind of, it let a lot of artists um, ignore all the technical people and make really cool movies. So most of the things that you see done by Pixar, it's not because they put billions and billions of triangles into it. It kind of is, but it's not as much. Mostly it's because artists were given the freedom to, to add shading and colors and lighting and texturing to the thing just by painting directly onto the 3D model. And a lot of the work that goes on in 3D space now is, is more to do with taking the 3D things and sculpting them and playing around with them. So these are the kind of the simple flexibilities that Blender gives you. So say you want to do a quick kind of, I don't know, say you want to do a quick cube with a badger on it, you could just do it in seconds. Like, I mean, that's pretty cool. I don't know. I didn't have that when I was growing up. Uh, <laughs> I'm not here to entertain you. <laughs> uh, what else can Blender do? You? Well, you can create a model that, uh, with a skeleton, and you can animate them, and play the animation, and export the animation as a video. You know. I was looking into doing this for Make My Own Computer Game, which is one of the hobbyist kind of things that I ended up playing with Blender in. And a lot of those times you're, you're making computer games and you think, yeah, I want that guy to swing a sword down and chop things in half and that's all cool. And then you realize that you're a programmer and you have absolutely no artistic ability whatsoever. And even if you did, you have no idea how to make a guy swing a sword and look really cool. And then you go to a program like Blender. And I'm totally not going to do that in Blender because that's impossible. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'll very quickly do this really kind of cool thing. Um, in Blender, you can very quickly do and skin modifier. So I can, um, yeah, I can just <coughs> do this and then extend this way there. Oh yeah, that's cool. And then like there's arms. This is yeah. Uh, make little legs on it. Really. Yeah, that's that's so cool. I'm do I'm totally doing this, guys. Uh, we'll, we'll give him a, a, a we'll give him a head. Yeah, he's got a tiny head. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Yeah, totally doing it, right? There you go. There's a guy, and you'll have to imagine a sword. Um, <laughs> just, come on, yeah, work with me here. Okay, so there you go. It just created a skeleton. That's really cool, right? It used to be that you had to work for hours to get those skeleton things. And then we could put it in pose mode. So we can just kind of, uh, we can just rotate his arm like that. Hello. Mm -hmm. uh, blah, 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 whatever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you can actually, there you go. You've got a model that you can manipulate in 3D space, right? So we can, we can pose this guy. Uh, if you just give me a, a second here. Uh, Ooh. You know what? Let's pretend I did something correct at the start. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> oh, crap. There's no redo, is there? <laughs> no way. There must be a redo. Ah. There we go. Um, before I applied a modifier, I did something wrong here. that way and we put that arm that way and we'll put uh, that leg there and yeah he looks awesome <laughs> <laughs> I told you I wasn't an artist um, that's cool so we've got him in it we've got him in one pose right so like we can um, 
we've got all these cool tools here, so we can make a quick animation here. Um, we just so it works using these cool keyframes and. Uh, That should be it, right? Yeah. So we, we we pose him there, and then we'll go like a hundred seconds into the feature, and we'll just move his arm back, and we'll move his arm forward here, like that, and we'll undo the leg movements. I don't know what I clicked there. But we'll find it. And there we go. And now we have an animation, right? So look, he just moves automatically like that, and it's all cool. And I didn't have to do all the individual bits. So you just make loads of different poses, you know, it looks like it's stop motion, but you just keep moving it on. And Blender does all the magic and fills in all the bits. If you were artistic in any way, your guy probably wouldn't be square, and his head wouldn't, wouldn't be some kind of frustrum, truncated, pyramid, robbers thing. Um, and you can do some really quick animations. So for me, doing, doing games, um, I was able to do a skeleton like this. Um, I was able to take uh, models from the internet and models from other programs that are Creative Commons licensed and important into Blender and go make a skeleton for that. And then I was able to move the skeleton and, and make the people do weird dances, you know, gender chickens, whatever. All the kind of things you need for really important serious games. And uh, it's, it's cool. And because um, anything you create out of Blender can be Creative Commons, you know, there's no license restrictions about what you create with it. And, People sell models online, even, and you know you can buy them. But a lot of people give away for free because you know it doesn't necessarily suit exactly what you want to do. So that's some of the quick animation stuff. Uh, what else? Game creation. Anybody like making games? I know I do. Blender. <laughs> um, Blender is Blender is really useful as a tool for making games. If you were doing games over here and you're doing animation over here, do all your animation in Blender, export it, throw it into your game. But what if you want to kind of test it out a little before you do all that crazy development work. Well, Blender lets you just throw the models into a, a pre-existing game engine, apply all this random physics, take user input, and actually test out the game there and then. So I made a game today. Uh, I'll show you that. Here's the game. It's awesome, right? <laughs> You're this ball. Um, the ball has a backstory. The ball was overthrown after many years, and now he's trying to break out of this prison. Totally awesome. Uh, you press play and the ball falls down automatically. That's like, I just threw these into the scene just like you saw there. But all I did was at the top, I selected Blender game instead of Blender not game. Um, and, and it's cool, right? So at the moment I can't move the ball. But uh, there's this logic editing thing here. And uh, if I just select the ball here, I've got all these, I, I pre built these, you just basically select. I press this key, you want to make the ball move in one direction, kind of thing, you know? So we just link them up. It really is this easy. I know it looks scary, it's not scary. All this is doing is saying that when I press the keyboard, certain keys on the keyboard, that it applies uh, force and momentum to the object. Alright, so I'll make this a little larger here. And I don't know, did, were we able to see it clear enough? The lighting is a bit weird. There's the ball now, and uh, I can just move the ball around now. It's got a bit of, bit of momentum going onto it there, like, Wee! but it can't go through the boxes, so you know, the dictator's stuck in there forever. So, uh -huh. um, but you know, it has all of the stuff in there, so you can drop down. Uh, some kind of random animated guy so that when you move it around he's doing his crazy chicken dance. You can put in stuff there for him to collect. It, the whole thing is click, 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 I've made a game. And not only is it uh, really handy for just kind of free forming, coming up with ideas and play testing a concept that you have before you go into big production, you can actually distribute games like this because Blender is multi-platform and it has a little small exe inside it called Blender Player and you just give the people the, the file that you created the game in and they open it up and it plays and they play the game. So the Blender Institute actually released an open source game called Yo Frankie. I think it's about sheep and bridges. I don't know. It's kind of cool. I think you run across the bridge and you try and jump. It's cool. Um, so they re they've released games in this and they're planning on making games out of some of the movies they've done because they've got all the artwork and the backstory so why not, you know? 
Um, so yeah, so if you want to make games with a prototype in Blender, it's kind of you know, really handy for you there. Um, I think we're kind of... That's it, really. I mean, there's, there's, a, lot, there's a lot of stuff in there for, for, for Blender peeps. Um, do, do, do. So there are just some quick demos about Blender Canifu. Um, how am I at time? Uh, you're about five minutes over, you seem to ignore <laughs> <laughs> uh, all the Yeah. Okay, so you don't get that question. <laughs> I'll just, can I just cover this last slide really quickly? Okay. Uh, for any of you who are who are actually into hackers and contributors and software developers, um, Python is almost exclusively built in Python when it comes to the UI and user and data. So if you want to make plugins for importing or exporting the data or the models or anything like that, it's an adventure land for people who know Python. It is great fun. They love plugins, they love contributors, and they also love cold hard cash. So, you know, if you really like Bender, you can totally even cold hard cash. They love that. They're actually doing a movie project at the moment where they're going to do their first full length feature movie. Um, they're currently raising funds for that. I think they're planning production to finish by 2017. Uh, so far, it's pretty cool. Um, there's lots of development stuff in there where you can do loads of coding, like custom um, uh, shader, <coughs> open shader language. It now does object tracking too, so you can actually just load a video into Blender and say, uh, keep track of that butterfly, and put that cue where that butterfly goes, and it'll just do it. It's it's absolutely stunning. I haven't, I've never seen anything so cool that is for free and so accessible to anybody, not since the CIA. So um, it's cool. Um, yeah, uh, I'll be around here for us tonight. So if you want to pose me for questions instead of taking up time here, um, please do. Um, and thank you. Uh, so we're going to have a 10 minute break now and then followed by the final two talks of the evening.